Hi Chris, uh, thanks for being our guest at this uh, event. Can you please give a short introduction on yourself? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Krish Krishnan. I'm the founder and president of uh, Sixth Sense Advisors Incorporate, an independent analyst company based out of uh, Chicago in the USA. Um, focus on data primarily as my life and passion, if you will. Dr live, dream, eat, walk, run data all the time. Um, have done work on the application side, have been a DBA for a number of years, product architecture, eventually into big data analytics for the last uh, nine years now and counting and focus more on helping enterprises evolve their uh, data journeys and in fact as I was uh, finishing a session at uh, the DWBI summit one of the questions somebody asked me was what is your definition of a point of view versus another speaker's definition of a point of view and I said both are fine one from the front in other from the back in but eventually it is the journey of data that matters the most. So to me, it's, it, I live, breathe, eat, work on data. That's me. Okay, thanks for your introduction. Uh, in your session, in your first session, you talk about the uh, mistakes to avoid in a big data implementation. Yes. One of them being the lack of a business case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but how do you make a business case when you're in this big data discovery process and well, maybe there's no business case yet or so, or what, what's your opinion on that? Absolutely. In fact, I think uh, this is a great topic to discuss, the lack of business case being a mistake on big data implementation. And why it is a mistake on the implementation aspect is that before you start any program or a project, you need to have outcomes established. In the big data journey, the discovery of data and then contextualizing that data to a set of events for the enterprise are very primary to think of. A lot of companies do not go through that process in detail. They just put in a system, assume that they can run analytics on top of it and get answers to questions and then do data discovery. No, you discover data first. So you do that at the data lake or even in the data swamp which is created below the lake layer. Then you write rules of engagement to say, I want to understand complex event processing. It's a business case. Complex event processing, I'm running a campaign. How many people have tweeted about this campaign or shared it on Facebook? How many people have spoken positive about me as an enterprise in a campaign? This is a retail business case that you can apply to any retail industry, hospitality included, right? Uh, movie theaters, we're going to release Batman versus Superman. How much profit are we going to make? Predictive analytics, business case. So these business cases are all in the organization. We don't look at it when we do the big data discovery. Hence, we miss out on having a business case. So if you put a business case and then plan the implementation, building the data lake into a hub, into a analytics integration into the KPI becomes a very successful journey for big data. There are about 25-30 cases of failure in the last five years that I have seen in Fortune 200 space because of not having a business case. That is the key. Okay, um, as you briefly mentioned, the, 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 the uh, data swamp, data lake, data hub, can you briefly give uh, your definition on those? Yes, absolutely. To me, when we are going to build a big data analytics ecosystem, what we are doing is we are augmenting our existing data warehouse. So if you, if you actually go back to the version one of Bill Inman's Corporate Information Factory or Ralph Kimball's Dimensional Modeling, they both have written in that that a data warehouse is an integration of all data across the enterprise for analytics, for understanding behaviors of products, customers, locations, employees, etc. When you have that uh, definition, you're having multiple kinds of users that need to access the data warehouse. What happened was we started off this journey with an RDBMS being the end state engine. 
that gave us very minimal capabilities on integrating all the data across the enterprise. So that's why we use the iceberg picture many times to define this enterprise data, right? The top of the iceberg is structured. What we have created, all KPIs, fun stuff. But does business use all of it? No, business actually uses the bottom of the iceberg. Wide, deep, big. All data across in different ecosystems. Eventually, we have built so many silos. So when we want to create this big data analytics ecosystem, we first have to understand we have to create a data swamp. In my definition, a data swamp is every bit of data that can be put into the enterprise. Don't worry about its quality. Don't worry about its format. As long as there is meta tags available that you can tag the data as it comes in, bring the data and that's the swamp. Obviously, I mean, it's going to be dirty as, you know, whatever you want to call it. Then you put business rules. Those business rules are defined by business teams to create not one, but multiple data lakes. Now, agreed that a data lake is dirty at the bottom, obviously, which means that data quality is still questionable. But you have now created specific business focused data lakes. Then you create data hubs, which are integration touch points that sit between a data lake and an RDBMS analytical database. So we're not going to throw away what we have built so far. We're going to re-engineer it to become more analytical. So now we have a bigger data warehouse ecosystem, if you will, on top of which you can run big data analytics because you can now run analytics across all the way into the swamp if needed at an operational level. So those are the layers of definition, if you will. So if you go from the swamp to the lake to the hub, you need to uh, categorize, classify, contextualize the data. Mm -hmm. um, can you briefly uh, explain what you mean by that? Yes, uh, yes. In fact, um, throughout my discussions here on 10 mistakes and on the session on data lakes guidelines, I kept repeating these words classify the data, categorize the data, context. The reason being, structured data by itself has minimal meaning. For example, I came in here, you know, to attend the DWBI summit times run. I am at this hotel, at the Mercure Hotel where it's run. I checked in, I gave them my credit card, they processed it. American Express sent me a thing saying, okay, we processed your credit card, blah, blah, blah. Here is the total amount put on it. American Express has no ideation what brought me here. All that they have is they have a POS data set. Now, if I am American Express and I want to run analytics on what made Krish go, mm -hmm. you know, to Amsterdam, I would also look at understanding Twitter, social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on all the other forums that's available to look at what's happening in Amsterdam. Then knowing Krish's profile, I can categorize, I can classify the data, then I can add context to it, which means now I'm putting event-driven meaning to it. Then I would be able to run analytics on top of it because I have categorized, I have tagged, I have classified, then I have contextualized because I have all the business rules available now on what's happening in Amsterdam and I have four or five possibilities of why this person might have gone there. That is the simplest way to explain all these different steps. Initially, people thought oh, this is only done in text analytics. No, it's not. It is for all analytics. In your session on the guidelines for data lakes and data hubs, uh, you present some very useful and detailed guidelines. Uh, one of them uh, being uh, fill fast, but we didn't get, go into the details. So can you please explain what you mean by it? Sure. Um, fail fast is a very interesting concept. Somebody asked me initially when I wrote about this, what does fail fast mean? Are we talking about agile, where we fail fast? In that case, how do we bring this into the data warehouse? Or how do we bring it into big data analytics? What are you talking about? Or is it that you're asking us to be mentally prepared to just fail, but we'll fail faster? How do you apply this? Fail fast means you are now looking at a set of rules that you will apply by where you can analyze the data that comes in and that's what I'm talking about fail fast from a data perspective. First off, when we say all data is welcome, which is one of my guidelines, 
can I bring all the junk I want in the world into my big data platform? Simple question somebody asked. No, you shouldn't bring all the junk. Fail fastest, put tags on the data where you can understand that you're bringing junk and create a rule by which you identify that problem and stop it even before it becomes huge. That is fail fast at a swamp level at getting the data in. Fail fast at a data lake level. Um, I called in marketing and I called in sales and I'm doing this uh, set of operational analytical rules. Are those the two teams who are interested in this data set? No, you know what actually I should have done? I should have called research, I should have called inside sales. Maybe I should have had some other business users come in. Fail fast situation. You immediately go and rectify the rules on how the data goes from the swamp into the lake. Lake into the hub fail fast. Hey, what analytics are we going to have to run? My uh, hub is in an RDBMS. How do I push this data through? Well, you could either use Scoop if you're on a Hadoop platform, or if you're on a NoSQL platform, you could do ETL, ELP. You know, I mean, all the vendors today have packages available to do this work. Fail fast is the ability to recognize how fast can I fail so that I can rectify and recover and continue work. We always had this capability. Even in the data warehouse, when we built it on the RDBMS, we had the capability but the key part is we never understood how to implement it. So we just kind of left it off saying, oh, it's the app world. No, it's not. It lives in the data world too. That's why fail fast means you're ready to recognize that you have a failure occurring and you rectify it. In fact, uh, there was a prior session to my session where Mike Ferguson and then prior to Mike yesterday, Rick Van Der Lanz, even in their sessions, they spoke about this. But they didn't call it fail fast. They spoke about saying, hey, if we have a situation where there's an error, let's make sure that, you know, we rectify it even before the error happens in a later stage of evolution upon in getting data in an ingestion from the source. So they both spoke about it. They didn't call it fail fast. My definition of fail fast is that. Okay. Thanks for your clear explanation and thanks for this interview. Thank you.